I'm going to show you how to build an app with App Inventor 2. And we're going to start with this, this app that's already been built where you tap a picture in MLK and hear a speech. Okay, in this one we're going to have two pictures, MLK and Malcolm X, and you can tap either one to play, play their speech. And it's going to be a little more complicated. You have to use if blocks, you know, where the app makes decisions. And, and the reason is you're going to need to know whether to start or to pause the speech uh, depending on where, where things are. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is add another button component. All right, so I'm going to go to the user interface palette and bring in a button. And this is actually going to be our picture of Malcolm, Malcolm X. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to the image property for that button. And I'm going to choose Malcolm 152 by 129. That's just an image. And I'm going to get rid of the text on that button. And now I've got, notice this picture is a little smaller than the MLK one. In fact, I've got a smaller picture for MLK as well. And so I'm going to choose and change his picture from this one to a smaller version of it. And I just used Photoshop to, to make these pictures smaller. Okay, so now I've got these two pictures. But I really want them to be side by side. So I'm going to go to Layout and choose this Horizontal Arrangement and bring it in. And I'm going to put MLK there and then I'm going to bring... Malcolm and put him to the side. So now we have them kind of left left to right. And notice there's also table arrangements, vertical arrangements. You can kind of kind of distinguish or, or set where, where all the uh, components should appear. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, I want to do a couple more things. One, these guys are named button one and button two. It's not very descriptive. And when we go over to the blocks editor, we really care about this, right? We really care which one we're dealing with. So we need to we need to distinguish. So I'm going to rename button one as the MLK button. And it's very important to rename. The way I rename is I put the component type as a suffix, this button, so I always know what kind of type I have, and then some descriptor as the start. So I'm going to call this guy Malcolm button. And that's just really set me up for when I get to the blocks editor. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. I'm going to add one more image, and this is really to make things look good in, in my app. And notice it's not a button, it's an image, which means you can't touch it to do anything. All right. And in this image, I'm going to choose another picture that was kind of preloaded. And that's this picture, which has both Martin Luther King and Malcolm, Malcolm X. All right. I guess I need to change my text over here to also say Malcolm. Okay, and just, just to make things look a little better, bit better, I'm going to make that font size, say, 18, and bold. Okay, and then I'm just going to move this label here. Oops, I don't want it in the horizontal range, but I want it above. There we go. So I'm going to make the label here so they can tap to hear the speech or tap to hear uh, one of the speeches. So I can change the text. just say each speech. Okay, so we've got a pretty good thing set up here as far as the user interface is concerned. Now we've got two buttons, but we need two players. All right, so I'm going to rename Malcolm's player, which plays his speech. I'm going to rename that the Malcolm player. Or sorry, the MLK player. Uh, let me rename that again. Here we go. I could only type, right? And then I'm going to add a new player component from the media drawer. And I'm going to call that one Malcolm Player. Okay. And just like we did with MLK, we need to associate a source file with it. And with Malcolm Player, I'm going to choose the speech that I've set up for him, MalcolmX.mp3. Okay, so we've kind of set up our user interface for this, this kind of more advanced app. And, you know, it's kind of a... a pretty common sample where you're going to have a number of pictures and when you touch those pictures play some sounds. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is show you the behavior. All right, so we've set up our user interface for our app and, and I haven't tested it yet on the companion, but let's see. Okay, so right now here's how it looks on the phone and if I touch Martin Luther King it'll play his speech, but Malcolm X doesn't have any behavior yet. So let's go to the blocks editor and we've only got this one um, event handler. And notice when I change the names in the designer, it kind of automatically changed the names for me over here in the block editor, which is nice. Okay. So I kind of need to do the same thing for Malcolm button. So I'm going to grab when Malcolm button dot click, and I'm going to want to play his his sound. 
Okay, and now I think I'll be able to touch Malcolm and play his speech. What is your real name? Malcolm, Malcolm X. Uh, and it's actually an interview of Malcolm kind of talking about the X in his name. It's very, very interesting. Okay, right now we can't pause it. In fact, if I click on Martin Luther King right now, the speeches are going to overlap. I don't know if you can hear that, but the, the speeches are overlapping. So I'm going to stop the companion, at least momentarily. Now this way, you know, I, I get back to the companion and stops those speeches. Obviously, we need a way to pause the speeches and so they don't overlap. Okay. In fact, even if there was just one picture, we would want to pause, pause that one. So let's work on the MLK button. And we want to make it so when we click it, it will either start or pause. You know, so in other words, if it's playing, it'll pause. If it's not, it'll it'll start it. Okay, so I'm going to go and grab what's called an if block, and these allow the app to make decisions. Okay, and I'm going to click on this little blue thing and put an else in there. Okay, this blue thing is called a mutator, and it allows me to kind of set how this if is going to look. And basically, what I'm going to do is ask a question, and based on that question, do do a different branch. Okay, in this case, the question I want to ask is is the MLK player, is it playing? And, and the player component has this nice property called is playing that I can use. So if the player is playing, I'll do one thing. In fact, what I want to do is pause the, the speech. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and start the speech, okay? So I'm gonna bring this guy down here and that, there's just some kind of connection problem. I, can, I, I just need to reset the companion, but I've got the start here and then I'm gonna go back to MLK player and I'm going to choose the pause function. And I think we're doing pretty good. So when the MLK button is clicked, if it's playing, pause it. If it's not playing, we do the else, start it. Okay. So anyway, let's test this out. I think I need to reconnect with the companion. I'm going to choose AI companion. I've got my phone here and uh, the projection got messed up, but let's, let's plug it back in. So I've got my phone and I'm going to click scan QR code and scan that QR code on the computer and it should bring up my app. Okay, good. So now all we've really done is I should be able to tap uh, Martin Luther King once to start it and again to pause it. I have a dream. Okay, that started. I just tapped it once. I'll tap it again. Pause it. Tap it again. Start. Pause. So we've kind of got this toggle set up where you can touch and to pause and start. Okay. We kind of want to do the same for Malcolm Player. So I'm going to show you how to copy paste. So I'm going to Command C on this block. Uh, with Windows, it's Control C. And then I'm going to Command V to paste. All right. And I'm going to bring this whole block over in the Malcolm button. All right. This wouldn't be too helpful because it's in with MLK Player. Um, and we really want the Malcolm Player. But the nice thing is there's these little widgets where you can actually change you can actually change um, which component you're talking about. So I'm going to change these all to Malcolm Player. Okay. And now I've got it where MLK button and Malcolm Player, or sorry, Malcolm button are either playing or pausing their, their speeches. So we're getting pretty, pretty close. The other thing we want to do is when Malcolm is clicked, I want to pause MLK and vice versa. So I'm going to kind of copy this pause. All right. And when the MLK button is clicked, we for sure want to pause Malcolm and then either pause or start MLK. And kind of the opposite, when Malcolm is clicked, we want to pause MLK and then go on with either playing or pausing Malcolm. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Let me start my companion, AI2 companion back up. And once it gets started, we can test our app. Let's connect AI companion. And let's go ahead and scan the QR code. All right, and let's see if we can start and pause both of these speeches. So hopefully we won't have any overlap anymore. Okay, there's the, the app. Let me click on MLK. That's good. Now I'm going to tap uh, Malcolm. Good, it stopped MLK and started Malcolm. I'm going to tap Malcolm again, stopped him. So anyway, we can do some more testing. And you always should do, do quite a bit of testing with, with software. But essentially, we've got this app where we've got a couple pictures, and we can tap them to start and pause the speeches in, in kind of a reasonable manner for, for the user. 
So let's just, you know, take a step back here for, for a second. And, you know, we've got this, you know, somewhat a little more complex app than, than the I Have a Dream that we started with, okay? And in this one, we've got two event handlers. So our app consists of two event handlers. It deals with two button clicks in this case. And each event handler has kind of a sequence of operations, right? So we could have a bunch of blocks here. They go in order, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, and they all get executed, right? As soon as that button is clicked. Now there's also some blocks which are conditional, right? So I'm only gonna do this block conditionally, depending on some test, right? In this case, my test is, is that player already playing something? If so, I pause, otherwise I, I start it up. But this is kind of indicative of how event handlers look. They've got the event, they've got a sequence of operations, but each operation can be conditional, can be based on some you know, decision the app makes on whether to do one or, or the other, okay? And you know, basically this kind of set of event handlers with conditionals in them, this is what, what an app or really any kind of software program is, is made of, okay? So anyway, here's a, a quick intro to app building with App Inventor and event handlers.